What's going on, engineers? Anybody that uses Linux knows that whether you've been using it one year or 30 years, there's always new stuff to learn in Linux. It's super powerful. So here is eight super heroic Linux commands that you probably aren't using, but you probably should be. Number one is redo last command, but as root. Command is sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark. Come on, you know you've done this before. You go to edit a file, you're not as root, edit something like Etsy host, and then you, you put your thing in there, and then you go to save, and denied, permission denied. Now what? So you exit out, and then you gotta retype it in. So instead of doing that, you do sudo, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and it'll redo the last command, but as root, then you can put whatever you want into here, and you're good to go. Number two, open an editor to run a command. So this is great if you want to compose a big command and you don't want to do it all in one line. You can open a quick editor while you're right in the terminal. So the command is control XE and you hit XE one after another. So come into your terminal, hold control, hit X then E, you get an editor. From here you can type your command. Of course it can be multiple lines. And then when you exit from the terminal, sorry, from the editor and you save, it will run that command. Number three is create a super fast RAM disk. And a RAM disk is nothing more than a section of your memory that's designated to act like a hard drive that will just get wiped out when you unmount the drive. The upside is you get read and write rates that are somewhere between five and a hundred times faster than hard drives. However, it is temporary, so when you unmount that drive, your data disappears. So let's check out RAM disks. So I'll start by, I'm in the mount folder. I'll make a directory called RAM, I'll go into there. I'm going to take dev0 and I'm going to write it out to some test file, I'll call it test ISO. I'll do a one megabyte block file and I will do eight gigabytes of data for that just to test. So I'm using an, an SSD to test this out. So you can see here that it took 44 seconds and it wrote at a rate of 189 megabytes per second. So we'll remove that test file back out of that folder. And this time we're going to mount the RAM disk. Go back into the folder, rerun that benchmark. You see in this case it took just a mere 2.5 seconds and it wrote at 3.2 gigabytes per second, which was almost 20 times as fast. So this is great if you need some quick read write space for files that you don't care about and you just want performance. Number four, run a command but don't have it go into history like the hacker you are. You'll notice here when you run a command like ls and then clear and then you type history, you see that those commands are in the history. But if I put a leading space, not going to be in the history. And then I run history, and you see that that's not there. Number five, fix a really long command that you messed up. So imagine you're doing a long command, you know, curl, and emkc.org, and then you're specifying some data, you know, a equals a, b equals b. And then you're specifying a user agent, you know, whatever and then you're specifying something else, and then you realize that you use some, some flag that doesn't work, and you go to run it, and you're like, oh, it didn't work the way I thought. Rather than hitting up and then navigating through that command, all you need to do is type FC, hit enter, and it'll open the last command in editor, where you can then make your modifications, you know, multi-line, and then once you have everything working, you can leave it, and it will run the command. Number six, creating tunnels with SSH. So this is really useful if you have something running in the cloud that is not exposed to the public, but you want to use it locally. So what you can do is SSH-L, and then the format here is going to be bind local port to remote host and port relative to the machine, and then connect using these credentials. So basically what this says is point my local port 3337 to emkc.org's 127.0.0.1 port 6379. So in effect what this does is it lets me connect to port 3337 and it gives me my Redis instance which is on emkc. So we can demonstrate this by running this over here and you see it just it does nothing because now it's connected so I'll put that in the background then I can use read a CLI dash P for port, connect to 3337, and now I have a Redis CLI that points to the Redis instance that's on EMKC, but I'm connecting locally. And you can do this for just about everything. 
This is a great way to access private resources on a cloud server without exposing that port publicly. Number seven, quickly create folders. So if you know you have a folder structure that has a lot of duplicating folders, you can use the brace syntax to basically make it so it does all the different permutations. So when I run this command, What's, what it's really doing is it's creating folder sub1, 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 sub2, sub1, sub3, sub2, sub1, sub2, 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 sub3. So it creates six folders just with one command. And the dash p is essential because that says create the parent folders if it doesn't already exist when you're trying to create the child folders. This also works with number ranges too. So imagine you need a, you need a hundred folders, each with a hundred folders in each. You can do one dot dot 100 slash one dot dot 100 and then when you click enter see into here you'll see that there's a hundred folders and then there's a hundred folders in each of those so in, in that case you create 10,000 folders with one command number eight intercept standard out and log to a file so this is really useful if you have a number of commands that are in a pipeline and at some point you want to know what is actually being piped to another place, you can use the command called t. So imagine we have a file here, chase.txt, and we'll pipe that to cat and redirect it to dev null. When I do so, nothing happens because it pipes it and then that's it. But if you wanted to know the output of that, you could use t-a for append to a file, and we'll call that log.txt, and then pipe that to cat. So in this case, the same thing happens. You don't see standard out, but if I look at log.txt, you get the actual text that was piped over to cat. I know I said it was just eight commands, but here's a bonus command. So this is exiting a terminal, but leaving all processes running. So the problem with terminals is if they terminate or if you close them, the terminal receives a hangup signal. It then takes that hangup signal and sends it to all the child processes, effectively killing them. The only case it wouldn't kill them is if the process caught hangup signals and ignored them, or if it was started with the no hub command, which makes it so it doesn't receive a hangup signal. But by doing disown, you detach it from the terminal, and then it will not receive a hangup. So disown a basically disowns all the processes that that terminal opened, and then you simply exit. This can be demonstrated by starting a sleep command. We'll have it sleep for 123 seconds. Then we'll put it in the background. And then we'll disown a and then exit. So it leaves the terminal. Terminal's gone. But if I come back and I do ps aux grep sleep, we can see that that command is still running and it'll continue running until it finishes, even though the terminal has long closed. This is extremely useful if you start a long job, like on a remote terminal, maybe on a cloud server, and you're worried about the connection being severed or the terminal being closed. You can just disown the process and then exit from the terminal, and it'll just run to completion. And we're done. So these are nine tricks and commands that I, I believe are either underused or not used, but you should let me know in the comments how many of these nine you already knew about and you use day to day. I'd love to hear about it. Also, this is a new format of video, so let me know in the comments below if you like this video format so I know if I should make more of them. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.